going on everybody it is january 24th wednesday slate uh we've got nine games this is the second time i'm recording this intro uh excel was doing that weird uh takes too long thing while i started working on kemba so i rebooted first so I'm back in it um just to show quick from last night put up 358 uh finished 63rd in the block so off to a good start in the single entry series um, but yeah, very happy with how everything went last night. King's dudes carried me. Willie Colley Stein and Scow were, were amazing for me. Um, but just want to give you guys a look at that. Uh, DraftKings was basically neutral. Wish I would have had more Willie Colley Stein there. Um, but let's dive into this right out of the gate. Hornets and Pels. Uh, Hornets have the 112.75 implied total, which is actually first on the entire slate which is kind of crazy um Kemba looks really good uh, I can't go all the way up to a two just because he's um he's priced appropriately like on FanDuel if you need him to get to 6x you're looking at like 50 and he can get there but that is really like you're asking a lot <laughs> I think he's just really safe for today. I would prefer him in cash. Um, Dwight Howard is 9,200 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DraftKings. That's a that's a big price on FanDuel. Um, be 46. He's gone for 40. He's gone for 43 or higher in one, two, three, four, five, six of his last seven. Um, I would guess that this is the situation where that stops. Um, while I love the game, I don't love the matchup for him. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pass on Dwight Howard. Batum is 6,000. Um, needs 30. He's done that twice in his last six. Um, because of the matchup, I'm interested. Just a four, though. MKG... 5200 on FanDuel, 4200 on DK. That's a really great price on DK. Needs 26 for value. Had the big 37-point game. Um, I'm going to say that I would only really want him on DK. And then sort of the same for Marvin Williams, 4600 and 4100. We need 23. You know, hit it in that three-game stretch uh, about a week ago. I wouldn't go crazy for it, but I would look at him on DK. Let's make sure that Gilchrist note is there too. Um, and then I don't really have any interest in Frank Kaminsky or Jeremy Lamb. Although well, Lamb has been playing pretty well, would need 22 for value. Has done that in the last three, but yeah, I mean you're forcing it there. To the Pels, Pels with the 110.75 implied total, which is fifth. Eventful morning so far. I, I've already, uh, while I was updating this, I listened to the Dunked On podcast for the first episode of the mock trade deadline. It's always a, a fun show. Nate Duncan, Danny Larue. Um, Dan Feldman and uh, unfortunately a man who has blocked me on Twitter for like three years now uh, Kevin Pelton somebody I adore oh adore that sounded terrible that's not what I mean love Kevin Pelton read his articles all the time um, we've had some interactions on the APBR metrics board uh, but he blocked me a while back <laughs> uh, while I was talking shit about Chad Ford changing his draft rankings retroactively. Pelton got caught in the crosshairs. He went to bat for his uh, ESPN mates and blocked me. I can't get him to unblock me. I even tried DMing him, private messaging him. So, Come on, Kevin Pelton. If you ever watch this, please unblock me on Twitter. I don't talk shit to you. I like you. Uh, all right, Pels. Cousins is 12-5 on FanDuel. Sweet sassy molassy, that's a lot. 
Eleven six on DK. I mean, it's it's impossible to chase him, right? I don't mean chase necessarily. He's obviously incredible, but uh, he had ninety seven point eight fantasy points. He had ninety eight point eight in the two games previous. So one less point. I don't I don't see a scenario where. DeMarcus Cousins is somebody I want to play. Drew Holiday, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DraftKings. Um, so you're looking for 40. He actually, you know, it, it's not terribly surprising, but not the best game um, in this most recent one. But he's gotten to 40, you know, well, one, two, three, four out of his last six. Most of those in the 50s. Um, it's not something I'm going crazy for, but he's just, he's criminally underpriced. Again, I can't go all the way up to two because I don't really love the matchup, even though I love the pace, but it wouldn't shock me if I had Drew Holiday. And that's a, that's a ranking that could change as weird as it sounds, moving through this, depending on where the rest of the value is. Anthony Davis is 11-8 on FanDuel, 10-8 on DK. We need 60 out of AD. Um, I like, I definitely like Davis more than Cousins in this scenario, just from a price perspective. Uh, and I think this matchup fits him a little bit more. So I'm going to say Anthony Davis, also a three. I want to like this game more because of that implied total. I just I don't see it. So maybe it's the filler that gets me there in this game, not necessarily the top end. Eton Moore, 4,800. Um, you need 25. That's not for me. Darius Miller, though, 3,900 on FanDuel, 3,500 on DK. You need... 20. Um, he's done it in his last three. You know, he has the ability to be a, a, a very big problem in your lineup, but in a GPP, I don't necessarily hate it. That's probably all I want to look at right now. Actually, he's going to be a, a DK3 and a FanDuel 4. That's a game I want to have bites at the apple in, but I'm having trouble thinking about getting to their, getting to the top shelf. Let's go to the Pistons. So Pistons Jazz is basically the opposite of Hornets Pelicans. It's the 16th and 17th ranked uh, implied total. Pistons two point favorites against the Jazz at home. Um, I just hope that I don't like anything here, but I'm sure. Ricky Rubio will look interesting, and Joe Ingles, and other guys that make me want to rip my hair out. Andre Drummond, 10-3 on FanDuel, 9,400 on DK. Um, I mean, I think the chances of me spending 10-3 on Drummond against Gobert are pretty low. Would need 50 to hit value. Obviously, he's gone crazy over the past couple weeks. 58, 58, 59, 61. He's been playing really, really well, but I am i can't just, like, a, he's a fade for me. Avery Bradley, 5,200 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DraftKings. That's 26. I mean, that seems like it's forced. I don't want any part of the Pistons on FanDuel. Ish Smith is 5,600 on DK. Let's get him to 30 and change. I'm fine with Ish on FanDuel. But that's it. I don't, it's not a very good game. All signs point to just avoiding it wholesale let's see the jazz now
Okay, Donovan Mitchell, 7,400, needs 37. He's got there three times, three games into the 40s. Um, he's gotten into the 40s with Gobert back, so that's okay. I'm fine with it here. Um... Just a three, though. <laughs> Rubio, 4,900 on FanDuel. Not the best in the last game, but only needs 25 to hit value. He had done it in three straight before that. Totally cool with it. Like, he's hit that... You know, he needs to get to 25. He's hit the 25 number in two of the games that Gobert has been back. So, I'm, I'm okay with that. He's dangerously close to being a two for me on, uh, if, if this game was a little bit better of a matchup, he could be there. Gobert, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. You need him to get to 40. Um, this isn't the game for me for Gobert. Hood, if he plays, is 4,800. Again, we need 25. Um, had done it in the two previous games. I'd explore it. But that's just, it's not a game you want to have a part of. Let's get out of there. Go to Indiana. Pacers, hosting the Suns. 112 implied total is third. I would imagine this is going to be a game where I have two guys. Uh, Miles Turner expected or is questionable, so we could be seeing him. Um, but you know, obviously we know the Suns are a terrible, uh, terrible defensive team, terrible team in general. Great team to target in fantasy. Ola Depot is 9,900 on FanDuel, 9,200 on DK. That is a monstrous price. We need 50 out of Ola Depot. Three straight not good games. He hasn't been over 50 in two weeks. Did get to 49. Oh, man. Depending on how this uh, optimizes, he could move to two. But right now, I don't love the price. I'd be more likely to fit two lower shooting guards in. But I haven't looked at this positioning like wholesale, so it's possible that he moves up based on scarcity. Thad Young, 6,200. We need 30 and change. Had 40 in the last one, 36 a couple nights ago. Um... That looks fine to me. But Collison, 5,400 on FanDuel. You're looking for 27. Um, he's been in, he's hit 33 times in his last five. Mid 20s, you know, he seems relatively safe. This is a great spot for him. Um, I actually think he's the the best thing I've seen just because of who they play. So bonus is 6,700. If Turner's playing, I, that seems like a stretch to be able to fit him in. Um, I can't just ignore it because even with the stepped on minutes, he's still there. And then Bojan, 4,000 on FanDuel. Um, so he only needs to get to 20. He's done that in his last two. You know, he can, he can get a little hot. This is definitely a game you want pieces of. I don't want any Miles Turner. And Corey Joseph is 3,900 on DK. Um... I think that would be interesting as well. You could roast second units. That'll work for me. 
Lots to like in Indiana, and we'll know more on the optimization. To Phoenix we go. Uh, Suns, 104.5 implied total is 12th. Not bad. Um, Pacers aren't any great shakes defensively, so I would love to see um, something look decent here. Devin Booker in particular. 8,100 on FanDuel would be uh, 40. He's hit 40 and 3 of 5. Um, I'm not, I don't have any issue with having Booker. Like, I think I'd rather, I don't know. The question between Oladipo and Booker in this particular game is tricky. It's probably Oladipo, but it's so tight because of that extra salary. Nothing crazy for Booker. It's just in the group of guys that I'm cool with. Uh, the assumption is Marquise Chris is back, so a lot of the value on Phoenix is probably going away. I don't expect Monroe to play, which should be Tyson Chandler. Only other guy I really want to look at here is TJ Warren. 7,100. You need 35. Um, he's hit it in his last two. He was re he got off to a great start um, two nights ago, and I I thought he was really going to blow up, and then he kind of quieted off a little bit. Still got the value, but still, uh, I'm okay with Warren, but it's not anything special. And then Marquise Chris is 5,400. He would need 27. Um, hasn't played in like two weeks. I have a hard time getting there. But if we get more news, he could look like a, an okay value. Man, I wanted more out of those first two, the Hornets, Pels, and Pacers, Suns game. I was hoping for something that just knocked my socks off. Sixers and Bulls. Uh, Sixers 112 implied total, which is third, and we're expecting Jared Bayless to be back, and no TJ McConnell. All right, now we're talking. So Bobby Covington, 6200 on FanDuel, 5700 on DK. Looks like we're gonna have a lot of Sixers. Covington needs 30. Um, He's been there in the last two. I'm completely cool with it. He's more like a two and a half. Ben Simmons, 8,700 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. Um, I don't totally love this for him. Would guard him. One of their wings. Um, you need like 43 or so. Has not been there. Uh, he's a DK3. And a FanDuel 4. I just like the, the game itself. Why is that not stretching itself? There we go. Sarich. Surprise, surprise. Love it. 6,300, he needs 30 and change. He's been there in his last three. Um, I'm not seeing any situation where I want to change that now. He's a FanDuel 2 for me. And a DK 3. And then Embiid, um, 11,000 on FanDuel, 9,700 on DK. Uh, needs 55. has gotten there in the past two weeks um i have no problem with loading him up i like him a lot actually he's a straight two uh right now he would probably be my focus at center from everything that i've seen Eleven thousand is pretty expensive but he looks great on dk and then bayless is at four thousand um uh, it's not for me i'd be well if he's the last guy you put in the lineup it's fine Bulls now. Um, 107 implied total, which is 7th on the slate. Uh, Levine is still on a minutes limit, so I, I believe it's like 23 or 24. 
Just something to keep in mind. Justin Holiday, 5,600 and 5,700. It's, it's not the best matchup for him, though. I don't love it. Needs 28. <sighs> Can get there. Uh, I don't love it defensively, although no Redick is probably better for him. Markinen, though. My numbers love Markinen. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with it again. It went well uh, two nights ago. Marking in 6,700. You're looking for 33. He's gotten there in four of his last six, including a 44-pointer. Obviously, uh, that one went to overtime. Um, looks like this one probably did as well. Yes, it did. That's double OT. Two double OT games, but... You know, maybe marketing's just a good luck charm for uh, overtime. Um, I'm going to say he's a fan duel, too. You know, who would be good? So he would have Saric, probably. Right? So... Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. He's going to be showing up a lot. I'm going to say DK3, though. Price is a little bit worse. Jerry and Grant is 6,300 on FanDuel. I can't get there. Um, I know that he had 50 in the last one. I'm not going to chase that. I just have a hard time believing that he gets the 30-plus. Denzel Valentine needs 25. That's another one where I'm not super interested in it. Um, just not enough minutes upside for me. Rolo is 4,200. You would need 20 and change. He's done that in his last two and three of his last six. Um, he's a down ballot guy. I don't have any interest in Miritich. And then if you wanted Levine, he would need 25. Um... I just I don't want him on a minutes limit. You know for a fact that there's no upside in him continuing to play. He would need a really stepped on salary for that. So that's all the seven o'clock games. We'll go to Atlanta now for uh, Hawks Raptors. One hundred four point five implied total is twelfth for the uh, for the Hawks. They are six point underdogs at home. So. You know, if you're curious about the talent level of this team, that should be a good barometer for you. Schroeder, 7,400 and 6,800. That's 37. I can't imagine I like that. He has hit that number in two of his last seven. He's been right next to it twice as well. Um, this isn't a spot for him. Only guy I really want to look at is John Collins. And that's probably just on DK. He needs 28 for value on FanDuel. Um, minutes are creeping down, but I guess I don't have any interest in him on FanDuel. DK, though, 4,600. Um, he, has, he has been very efficient, so I think it's worth a look there. Nothing more than a 3, but... Um, it's just not it's not horrible. You know, 4600 is a very low price for someone that scores as efficiently as he does. You need like 27 for 6x. Um he's at a point per possession pretty regularly. Puppies are talking. I don't know if anybody heard that. Other than that, that, that's not really the game for me. Let's take a look at the Raptors though. Um they might be the game for me. What's today? Wednesday? Ah, tonight's trash. Okay. 
I thought they were bar they're probably barking at kids getting ready for school. Uh, Raptors 110.5 is sixth. Um, this will look a little bit better. I think this is going to be a Kyle Lowry night. I haven't had one of those in a while. Uh, DeRozan is 8,800 and 8,300. Needs 44, which he's only done twice in his last eight. Um, he has been tapering off a little bit. He had that uh, strong stretch. I assume his line has been trending down over the last week. Yeah, you see. Hit that peak. And then just fell off this past week. I mean, I'm fine with Demar. It's a it's a great matchup for him, um, but I'm not gonna go wild over it. Kyle Lowry, on the other hand, 7,900 on both sites. He needs 40. Uh, three straight games in the mid 30s, and then he capped it off a couple nights ago with a 53 pointer. They've had a couple nights rest. Um, they're playing at home, or no, they're on the road, rather, um, but, you know, they're coming in pretty well-rested. I like Lowry there as a two. Then Serge Ibaka, um, 5,700 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. You need 28 for value, which he has not done in any of his last five. He's actually been really bad lately. How bad does his line look? Oh my god. Looks like he was just well, everything was going good, you know, pretty steady performance and all of a sudden sniper got him. <laughs> Fell off the cliff. But he looks great. DK 4900. Like that, let's just say that's 5000 for him to hit 7x. He needs 35. He hit 47 2 weeks ago. Like it's Serge Ibaka, he's still he shouldn't be 4,900. Um, he's playing so poorly that I can't just say like he should. On a normal in a normal scenario, he would be a DK two because of that price and his pedigree. But he's been really bad over the past week and a half, so it could be injury injury related. Uh, Jonas. I'm not interested in played or he's 5400 you know you need 27 played 11 minutes in the last one that has me a little nervous Delon Wright 4800 Jakob Pertl 4000 I don't think I want anything else there um Anxious to see if anybody else pops up. I don't think that they will. To Dallas we go. Mavs, 105.5 implied total is ninth. They are 5.5 point underdogs at home against the Houston Rockets. Alrighty, Mavs. I don't want any part of Harrison Barnes, I don't think. 35 for value. He's always just sort of right there. This is not the best game for him. Yeah, that seems like forcing it. Wes Matthews, though, 5,100 and 4,800. Needs 25. Um, I think this could be a decent game for him. Ah, it's just one T. No, nope. that's right. There it is. Uh, save this before something goes wrong. Dennis Smith, 6,600 on FanDuel. He would need 33. Uh, he's done that. Quite a few times in the past two weeks. Hard to not like him here. Um, I'm, I'm fine with it. Actually, it might be a two for me. He needs to get to 33. Yeah, 
I like Dennis Smith a lot. What's his line look like? I think he's been playing a lot better lately. Ah, leveling off. Hit a lull and then got up to a, a pretty solid peak. But been playing as like a 1.1 fantasy point per minute guy, which at 32 minutes is, you know, like 36 points or so. It's not bad. Uh, Yogi Ferrell, 4,600 on both sites. It's 23. Um, he's actually been playing a lot better lately. I'm fine with a three there. He's, he's going to show up a lot when I do this. That's probably it. Let's check out Houston. Rockets, 111 implied total is fourth. I would imagine I'm going to want at least one of the biggies here. Yeah. So Harden is 11-5 and 10-9. That's like 57. Hasn't been there in the three games since he's been back. This feels like a good spot. Can't get too wild about it though. The only only thing to note would be um, Dallas is 21st in opposing free throw rate, so you know it could be a game where James Harden gets to the line a lot. What's his history been like against the Mavs? Not the best there. Only got to the line four times. You see last year when he had double-digit free throw attempt games, he got into the 50s. Um, still just a three, I guess. Chris Paul, 10-1 on FanDuel, 9,500 on DK. Uh, this is a matchup that fits him from a shooting perspective really well. You need him to get to 50, uh, which he has done four times in the last two weeks. Uh, I think I prefer Chris Paul to James Harden. I think this matchup works a little bit more for him. Um, if he could have a game where he gets to the line, you know, in the six or seven time range, that could be good for him. Um, Dennis Smith Jr., not exactly a, a defensive wall for him. So I think Chris Paul might... I think Chris Paul, out of everything I've seen so far, I think Chris Paul might be my favorite play on the day. Doesn't mean I'm going to end up with them in the long run. It's all about how salaries fit, but I'm hoping that he shows up on the optimizer a little bit because I think he looks great. Eric Gordon, 5,200 on FanDuel. He needs 26. Um, hasn't done it in the last two. It's so weird to look at this stuff because, Jer or because you know, Ariza was out. And then Harden was out. So balancing that's a little weird. But, I mean, 5,200. I like it. It's not a bad value. Capella on DraftKings is 6,600. Um, that's a really great price for him. Okay, three more games. Grizzlies hosting the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, there is no real line for this, but either way, it's going to be a line where we're not interested. Um, I've got the Grizzlies at 98.5 implied total, which would be dead last. Uh, the Spurs are not going to be far behind them here. It's, uh, it's not a good one. It's one thing when you wanted to watch Spurs-Grizzlies and you knew it was going to be a pace down game grit and grind, you know, Zebo still there. But now it's just a bunch of guys most people have never heard of against, like, what ends up being the Spurs B team. No no Gay, no Kawhi. I'm sure other people will sit out. No man who, who knows. Watch a little bit of the Spurs last night. Tony Parker was just hitting mid-range jumper after mid-range jumper. I felt like he could have did it until he was 70 years old. All right, Marcus Gasol, 8,100, needs 40. 
this seems like it would be uh, really difficult for me to wrap my head around ending up with him. Yeah, no thank you. Tyreek, 7,900. This I'm going to have to look at. I thought I spilled... I thought I spilled coffee on myself. <laughs> uh, Tyreek needs 40. He's done it twice. Um... You know, obviously, San Antonio, not the best defensive matchup, but with his price back under 8000 and the way that he has volume, you know, you can get there. Only guy I want to look at is Jarrell Martin, 4600 He needs 23. Um, he's been in and around that area over the past four. At the very least, you know, 20 and above. Um, I think his price jumped pretty substantially there. I want to say he was 3,900, but I could be wrong. Now he's 4,000. Yeah, those $600 are ginormous in this case. Now there's only one R in Jarrell, of course. Um, he's just a three because of that 600 bucks, but he's getting the minutes. That's all I want there. Let's go to the Spurs. Um, 101.5 implied total would be 15th. This is just um, ugly. Spurs on the back-to-back -back as well. Um, and going road in the second game is the is the trickier side of it. I don't... This is just not good. Uh, Murray is the only guy that I would want a part of. I don't get the sense that the back-to-back -back matters to him. I'm not gonna go crazy. He, he had obviously he had 50 and change yesterday, um, seven steals. So, you know that's a part of it that's not necessarily going to carry forward. But he's 5200 and he's the starting point guard of the Spurs going against either Mario Chalmers or Andrew Harrison. So he's a two. It's gonna it's gonna seem like it's chasey, but it's not. His price is just great. And he's in a great scenario. It's just the rest of this shit sucks. I don't want Aldridge at 9,200. I don't want Kyle Anderson at 6,200. Although maybe Kyle Anderson, but you need him to get to 30. That's he got there. Like, well, he's got there in his last three. He's been playing like really well, right? Yeah, he's been right around just under a point per possession or point per minute. So, uh, yeah, I don't, why are my numbers so down on him? Uh, yeah, it's probably just the matchup in general. Only thing that I want out of this is Murray. It's just, let's not overcomplicate things. Blazers hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves. 106.25 implied total is 8th. Um, looks like a CJ game. Maybe. So Dame is 9,400 and 8,900. We're looking 47 for Dame. Three straight 44 or higher. Three, three straight 44 or higher in this range. Uh, he was down in the last one. Can certainly get there. Don't entirely love the matchup, especially if uh, Jimmy Butler is back. Not that that directly affects Dame, but it indirectly does. So four. CJ, though, 35 for uh, value on FanDuel. He's done that, one, two, let's just say since Dame came back, one, two, three, four times. Um, it's a better price on DK, but I like that a lot. I would say, because he should get Wiggins, right? Or would they put... Hmm, how would they do that? Will Butler guard McCollum, or would they have 
Could they hide Teague on Aminu? Since Aminu basically only shoots corner threes. I don't know. That'll be interesting. Uh, I'll have to think about that. I might have to go back and... Have they played it all this year? I might have to go back and watch that. CJ against Minnesota. Okay, what about Dame against Minnesota? Hmm. Been okay. Uh, it looks like CJ is just a three. I might have overthought that one for myself. No thank you on Aminu. No thank you on Evan Turner. Nurkic needs 35. Um, he's been yo-yoing between 16 and 47. So this isn't a great one for him. How did he do in the previous... Nothing crazy. Just because of the price, I can't just totally say no. The Napier 4400 needs 22. Um, sure. Wolves. I'm expecting uh, Butler and Crawford to play. What's the line there? 104.75 implied total, which would be 10th. Uh, this is a made-up line, but should be in the ballpark. All right, Jimmy Butler is 9,000 on FanDuel. That's 45. Prior to getting hurt, he had put up 45 in three of his previous six. Um... I'd be perfectly okay with Jimmy Butler here. Uh, it's probably FanDuel 3, DK 4. Andrew Wiggins is 6,100 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. I wouldn't touch him at all on DraftKings. But you need him to get to 30 on FanDuel. That's perfectly reasonable. He's been doing it in games even with... Uh, Jimmy Butler. That's FanDuel only. But Towns, uh, 9,300 and 9,600. I think he's a, a really good matchup here. Um, I don't think they have anybody that could really deal with him. Certainly not Nurkic. He needs 46. Um, he's been in the high 30s most of the time, but clearly has the ability to go into the 50s and 60s. I like Towns a lot. He's a two for me. Taj at 5,600. Uh, that's 28. Yeah, totally cool with that. Might actually be a two as well. Uh, yeah, 28. He's at 28 in one, two, three, four, five of his last eight. Um. Price is just, if it was like 5,300, I'd be a little bit happier. And then Teague needs 30. He's done that in, did that twice with the full strength squad, almost three. Put up 40 without Butler and Crawford. Um, I can't get too wild about it. That's yeah, spelled wrong. Oh my god, I can't type today. Final game on the slate. Los Angeles Clippers hosting the Boston Celtics. Still no line, but I've got the Celtics favored by one in LA. Uh, this should be a terrible game for the Clippers from a fantasy perspective, depending on what their prices look like. I guess I could say the same for every single team all the time. So let's start it off. Lou Williams, 8,600 and 8,100. That's uh, 43 for Lou. 
He's done it quite a few times in the past two weeks, but this is uh, this is a different game. I'm not married to the idea of having him, but his price isn't as prohibitive as I expected. Blake is 9,000. He'd need 45. Uh, I had a big one in the last one. Has been at 45 twice since he's been back. Again, it's just not the game for the focus here. Okay. Tyrone Wallace still sitting at 4,400. Um, he would need 22. He's been steadily at that just under 20 mark, but at that price point, you know, play style, he can get there. Only guy I'm interested in would be uh, Montrez Harrell. Uh, should get a bunch of minutes in this one. He's at 4,900. You would need 25 from Harrell. He's had uh, multiple 30-point games, four in his last six. So he jumps off the page big time, and he's likely to uh, to pop up on the optimizer a lot, but it's not a focus for me. I know the price looks great. You know, he's got the, the double green lights, but I don't like the game. I'd be okay to end up with him. That's that that would be the least of my worries, but I can't I can't just lock him in in this against the Celtics. They're just too good defensively. Finally, Taya Dosic would be twenty five for value. You know, he's been there a couple times. Cool with it here. Just again, not a focus. And then last on the night, Boston Celtics. Um, I assume there's going to be some good stuff to look at here, but we shall see. Celtics would be a 104.5 implied total, 12th, middle of the pack. Uh, Horford, 6,700 on FanDuel. 51, or 7,100 on DK. I mean, you're looking for like 34 from Horford. Uh, he's been there quite a few times. Uh, he should be able to eat against the Clippers with no DeAndre. Uh, I think Horford's actually a two for me. But key takeaway, a uh, FanDuel two for me. Key takeaway there is I don't know if I'll be able to end up with him just because of where the value is. Jalen Brown at 5,700. Um, you're looking for 30 haven't had it much lately matchup is fine um, nothing crazy Kyrie 8200 uh, you know it's again it's fine not something I'm wild about Jason Tatum 5400 that's 27 I just you know these guys are hitting a bit of a rookie wall or Tatum's hitting a bit of a rookie wall, it is. It's probably it for me there. That's probably it for me across the board. So let's go dump this stuff into the optimizer and see what gets pooped out. I'm really curious here to see how much this lines up with the things that I like. Fifty. Yeah. As expected, a ton of Montrez Harrell, Covington, Dennis Smith Jr., Butler, Markinen. Ooh, should have clicked save first. That went fine. I have five point guards in the second tier barely anybody else anywhere so let's look at center first because that I think is the place that I need to focus the most lots of Horford and Bede and Towns um, clearly those are my three best plays so that works out perfectly um, I'd be fine with ending up with any one of those three so what I'm gonna do Deselect everybody except for Towns, Horford, and Embiid. 
and then rerun those 50. So I do get eight lineups with Chris Paul. So those are going to be the first ones I look at. Um, I don't have any two star shooting guards or small forwards. So at power forward, I can get to Harrell and or I can get to Markinen and Saric, I would imagine. That's Markinen and Harrell. I prefer Saric. So if I grab that, we'd be looking there. So this, uh, it's just so much Tyrone Wallace. I'm going to have to neuter him a little bit. But, you know, something like Paul Collison Booker. Wallace, Covington, Prince, Sarich, Harold Towns looks okay to me. You know, all of these look pretty good to me. I think that I wouldn't be able to end up with Sarich. If I went Markinen, that gets a little weird. Um, are there scenarios where I don't get Tyrone Wallace? Not without ending up with weird people like Jeremy Lamb. All right, it's going to be, uh, it'll be interesting. A little bit of value would go a long way, particularly um, at the, like, shooting guard and small forward positions. We'll take a look at DK now, and then we'll get out of here. So we will be live tonight at 6, as per usual. Let's see what we got. Tons of Harold again. With good reason. I mean, he's playing 30 plus minutes and DeAndre Jordan's still out and... Now his price is going down, so you know, he's going to pop. All right, so let's say Harrell, and let's say Murray. Where do we end up from there? A lot of John Collins, but I wouldn't want to focus on it right out of the gate. Um, I'd be fine if I ended up with him. Uh, take that filter off for DK. So I've got Murray. Embiid, Towns, Paul, Lowry, Smith, Collison, Murray. If I get Smith, I can get Embiid, then we end up there. Yeah, so like something like this looks great to me. Murray, Mitchell, Simmons, Abaka, Embiid, Smith, Collins, Harrell. Love that. Love that a lot. You can even make a case for this one. Um, Ish, Damar, Covington, Collins, Embiid, Murray, Harrell, Smith. I'd be fine with that. So that's it, guys. I uh, appreciate you joining me for this one. Uh, Wednesday slates are usually pretty fun. Um, but let's kill it tonight. I'll see you guys live before lock. You know the drill. Like, subscribe, the whole nine yards. And uh, I'll see you in like 11 hours or so. Adios.